everyone Simon here again right so let's talk about today this is a uh, gonna be a bar video soapy massage girls are a pain to work with so that's later on in the video so what's this one all about a lot of you new subscribers and a lot of you have watched the bar videos I've done as a bar manager and I've mentioned in the earlier ones that I was managing two bars but I never really spoke about how I really started and bar one so what I'm going to do today this is going to be a rambling story video but it will give you the backstory on the first bar and then the next video after this will be the one quite a few of you are waiting for where I did a teaser uh, how I bar find 23 girls in an hour and 15 minutes so that'll be the next video but from these two videos it should answer most of your questions that are coming through give you uh, my story on managing the two bars plus I want to introduce some characters from my bars and uh, give you how it all happened so without further ado I was in Patea and I met this older couple, Thai couple, about 60 years old. They had many businesses. Now, they had a soapy massage and it was older girls, 35 years upwards. And it had been, you know, long, long, um, been open for years, their soapy massage. They had a money lending business, which I didn't really get into. They had properties, flats, rooms, houses, which they rented out. Uh, and they had a quite a few people working for them now the lady I'm not going to give them names these two but the lady I just call them my bosses the lady I were was mainly on the bar side um, I got talking to them by accident I think I was in their sofa massage because it had a quite a nice seating area for drinking and not taking the girls or anything and I got that's how I met this lady and her husband and it came about that I got offered the job as a bar manager. Now, what happened? Just off Walking Street, right in the middle of Walking Street, is a little soy that flicks off. It's almost opposite the escalator. Um, and down this soy used to be a nightclub on the left-hand side. It was two buildings that were knocked into one. And... It was sort of covered in little tiles, little mosaic tiles. The outside, the inside, the whole thing. And if you were looking at the front of this double bar, there was just a double sliding black door. Um, and inside, as you came in, on your right was the dance floor. On the left, one step up, was a, a seating area. And then in the middle, in front of you, was a huge sort of U-shaped bar that could fit about five or six bar staff in and a cashier now on the this side your left upstairs was just one set of one one big open plan office but on the right hand side on the back of the dance floor was an archway through to some toilets and then some stairs going up to i think five floors of short time rooms um that's another video short time rooms but a lot of you know what that is and in the dance floor in the corner was like some little steps going up in a sort of um, going up at an angle to this like pedestal, a bit like in a church. The, um, the 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 priest, the vicar, would stand on to give his sermon. And this was about six foot up, and it was a DJ box. So this this nightclub had been closed down about a year before for illegal substances and all sorts of goings on. And it was quite notorious. And anyway, it got shut completely down. And these bosses, my new bosses, bought the building at a huge knockdown price. It had been stood for a year, nobody doing anything with it. Through their businesses, somehow, they managed to buy it cheap. And this is how the conversation struck up about um, they bought this building and they needed someone to, they wanted to convert it, convert it to a bar and they wanted a manager and that's how I got the the bar manager job so at this point 
I'd never been a bar manager in my life, nothing to do with the industry. I think I had a weekend job at college in a bar for a couple of weeks, but God, no idea. So we got chat and I got the job. Simon, do you fancy it? And I, yep, okay. So we went down, the lady was mainly in charge with the bar. So she took me down, we had a look at it. Really dark and dingy and it was just weird place, weird, the layout. And she said, right, what do we need to do? What do you think? And I didn't have a clue. And I just said, we just need light in here. So we need two big windows at the front, knocking out, different lighting, get rid of this huge sound system and put a, something a bit more modern and smaller in. Um, and we'll get it up and running. So that's what we did. Uh, within two days, she'd got builders in, put windows in the front, lightened it all up, Still had all this funny mosaic stuff everywhere. New lighting, new sound system, and stock flying in there, beer, everything was set up. A new sign outside the front. What did we call it? It was called, it was Soy BJ, the little lane. So we called it Soy BJ Fun Bar. A couple of big TV screens for sport. And in the, where you came in to your left, we put one of those six foot American pool tables, the coin op ones. So we got a commission every time people played. Uh, put one of those in and a CD deck system up in the corner. And we were ready to go. So the next thing I had to do was I had to get a Mamasan. Now, I hardly spoke any Thai at all, maybe three or four words at this point. Luckily, the lady, the boss, she spoke a bit of English. We said, we need to get a Mamasan. And so I asked around, talked to other bar owners. Very hard to find a Mamasan, very hard. Now, I also was sort of on my own, um, didn't know the, anything. But I'd met this girl when I was playing pool up on Second Road at a bar complex. This Thai girl who, we just hit it off. She played pool, we both loved pool. She wasn't, she had been a bar girl in her past, but she had long, t long time boyfriends. Anyway, she just broke up with this guy and we were chatting the one night and I said to her, because uh, her English was great, I said, I need uh, a friend who speaks English and who can translate and help me and I need a mamasan. She'd never done it before and she said, well, what sort of money? Um, and I managed to get 10,000 baht a month for her to start with and that increased I said but you need to get a couple of girls we need girls for the bar and she said I've only got a couple I only know a couple so um, I don't know how we can do that anyway I thought this is a good idea to get her as the mama son and um, let's call her frozen why am I calling her frozen well you know those chest freezers the long ones with the lift up lid big things well she had big chest so I just call her frozen <laughs> And anyway, we hit it up. We, we were just friends and we, we just got on great. Uh, and her, her English was brilliant. I couldn't have done it without her. I just didn't know the language, didn't understand it. So I got to the boss and said, right, I found a mama son. I want this girl. They met and they hit it off. So she got the job. So there I am. We've got the bar. It's all stocked, ready to go. We've got the mama son. She's found two girls. So I've then said to the boss, um, we need a soft opening for about a week. Let's get things running. Well, that obviously she didn't understand because come the next night, the sign's up, the lights are on, everything's ready to go. She's put a cashier in who runs some of her other businesses. Two bar girls, tomboys who were gay. One was called Toy. The other one, I can't remember the name. Remember that name, Toy? Because there's a bit of an update about her and reference Apple. Another story. So Toy and this other Tom girl with a barmaid, a cashier, and then Animal. Who the hell is Animal? Well, okay. So doors open. In comes this four foot five small round plump tomboy another tomboy again gay 
she had blue spiky hair about eight inches looked like Sonic the Hedgehog but I called her animal because she just grunted at me never spoke to me in 12 weeks just grunted at me she'd walk in up to the DJ box she had CDs from other bars and nightclubs and go-go bars fabulous all the latest stuff she was just excellent on the turntable CD thing as a DJ so she just come in at five o'clock and this bar was five o'clock in the evening till two in the morning day one in comes animal grunt goes up to the DJ box now you can picture the DJ box is, is six foot up in the air you can see a bit of the, the equipment there's a little bit there and then all you could see above was blue spiky hair sticking up and her doing this from five o'clock at night till two in the morning it was just all I could see was spiky hair dancing playing music it was just so funny all you could see and then when animal wanted the loo she started a track and then she ran down the stairs through that to the loo back up that's the only time you'd see her when she wanted drink she just some tomboy language just grunted across at the girls um, a toy or swore in different languages and then they take the drinks up it was just like but the bosses this is a DJ from one of the bosses other ventures so there's animal there you've got toy behind the bar and you've got frozen who's my mama son and we've got two girls day one soft opening um, and in walking street because it's down the lane my idea was we're gonna have to get girls to work for us put them up on the main street with signs bring customers down so and I've seen this from the other bars in the lanes and things so you've got to come up with an idea of clothes for the girls some of these other bars they were all dressed in different outfits for each bar different themes sports bar I think it well we've got to get something so yeah five o'clock six o'clock came so an hour in no customers animals up there music Toys are in, oh, so we're open. So I'm talking to Frozen. What we're going to do? We need to get girls. She put some signs out the front as usual. And when you start a new beer bar or any type of bar in Thailand, the hardest part is getting those girls, because they're only interested in bars that are doing well and got lots of customers. So that's what attracts them. And they move each month. They get bored with the bars, and they just move to another bar. They get the salary, move. You know, suddenly you can have 20 girls, and they've all gone. And you've got nothing very hard to get the girls anyway so an hour in suddenly uh, I think it was 15 or 16 girls walk into the bar and my the boss comes in now they're soapy massage girls my boss has got a soapy massage with 40 odd girls they're all 35 plus I mean they're still attractive and when I've been at the soapy massage I've talked to them and had a laugh with them and they're nice. Um, 15 walk in or so and the boss and it's like here we go here's some girls to get us going this week. I'm like Whoa. okay fine brilliant. 15, 16 soapy massage girls in they walk they all sit down start doing the makeup and stuff. Boss disappears off she goes Phew, gone. Frozen steps in chats to them all yep yeah, they get on all right next thing um must be about seven o'clock they will just get up walk out disappear they didn't go up the road to get they just vanished i thought what the hell where have they gone what are they doing frozen didn't have an idea no idea still no customers i think maybe one guy wandered in <laughs> empty bar music nutter up there behind me animal yeah one drink and he's gone then hour later eight o'clock all the soapy girls come massage girls come back um, and they all came in had a drink and it was on the tab so it was free apparently uh, chatted to frozen and then right off they went again but this time they went up onto the main street to start getting customers and these soapy massage girls are so hard to describe them. I mean, I mentioned in my other 
videos about Apple, who was my best girl in the other bar, and she was really professional. These soapy massage girls are like 10 steps ahead of her. They are ruthless. They were, well, I, I just couldn't believe my eyes. They were coming down from the walking street, carrying people sometimes. There was two or three of them, and they'd get a guy, and they'd pick him up and drag him down and bring him in for a drink. But then other girls started coming in with guys that I didn't you know. Where have they come from? Who are they? Turns out these soapy massage girls, by orders of the boss, had dissipated round the area, letting all the girls in the other bars and the other bars know that we've got these short time rooms upstairs here that used to be open, closed down, and now open again. Now, I hadn't even thought about these rooms and didn't make any, you know, didn't mean anything to me. But there were no, eight, nine rooms up there. This woman appeared and who was stood around by the toilet. She was cleaning the toilets and she was our cleaner, again by the boss, one of her employees. But these girls were coming in with customers from other bars, walking up to the cashier. And uh, this is me, naive, didn't, I didn't have a clue what was going on. So walk up to the cashier. Cashier had given them a key for one of the rooms. And off these girls with the, their customers up to a short time room. Um, but as they came in, they, they'd get a drink for them, like a lady drink. And the customer with them get a drink. And the cashier would give them a chitty. And off they'd go, upstairs, short time. Now... Basically, what was going on, the my boss, because they knew these short-time rooms would be an income, had let everyone know on all the local bars and things, you know, this is right in the centre of Walking Street, just off a lane, there's rooms there for you. And the cashier was charging 300 baht for a short-time room, which could be up to an hour or two hours, whatever. 300 baht. Now, the girls coming in from other bars... They were getting a ch the little receipt for 500 baht for the room. So their guy they're bringing in has got to pay 500 baht for the room. And when they come back down, the guy would get the bin for the two drinks he's bought. One lady drink and one drink for him. And of course the lady drink is watered down Coke. So 80 baht, cost 10 baht. His drink and the 500 baht bin for the room. And when guys come down, the last thing after going short time, they just want to get out of the bar. So they, there's the bin, and it's what, five, six, eight hundred baht or something? Pay it, and they're gone, <sighs> straight away. And the girl from the other bar is still there. She then gets a kickback from our bar of 200 baht for the room, because we're only charging 300, but the guy's being charged five. So she's got 200 baht there, lady drink. We've apparently agreed we're giving them half, so they're getting 40 baht for the lady drink. We've gained uh, a guy buying one drink, 300 baht for the room. Everyone's happy. Fantastic. And off they go. And then this stream of people coming in from other bars, girls with customers, to use these rooms. And in the meantime, we've got the soapy massage girls who are absolutely doing my head in. They are physically dragging people in off the street who are coming in, kicking and screaming, who don't want to drink, and they're getting all upset and just walking back out the door. And these girls are wondering why, you know, they can't convert these to customers. Then they start, they all group together and start talking. And then they try a new tactic, which is even worse. I mean, oh my God. They're then going back out to the street, drag more customers in, and they're then saying to the customers like, Okay, fantasy. Two girls, three girls. We'll all go upstairs. And I'm like, oh my God, this is just crazy. And some of the guys were going for it. And yeah, they're getting kickbacks. And so soapy massage girls working with them. It, it, take them out of their environment, put them into a beer bar. It just does not work. Nightmare. They were absolutely nightmare. However... Because they'd gone round talking to all the other bars and all these other girls were coming with customers, it had a positive knock-on effect for the bar and a boost for me and Frozen. 
end of the night, what happened? I got on the, a blower um, to the boss and said, get these massage girls, soapy massage girls, the hell out of the bar. They're doing no good at all. They're causing us so much problem. Um, we'll just find our own selection of girls. Is that okay? Yep, yeah, no problem. And that was it. Soapy massage girls, gone. So there's some advice. If you've got any bar, and soapy massage girls want to come in and work, just think twice, because they are, I mean, they're lovely girls and everything. And at their job, in the massage, brilliant. But in my environment, in that first bar, it one night was just, it was crazy. Customers were getting upset, angry. It was causing so many problems. It was just like, no way, forget it. So, end of the night, they've gone. Then Frozen and me started having a chat. And Frozen, brilliant. What a clever girl. She had been talking to all these girls that had been coming in with customers on their way out. And she'd also been grabbing the cust their customers and saying, look, come back into this bar without girls and have a drink and look what's going on. And so... She was promoting that. The girls that were coming in from the other bars, some of them were go-go girls. And they're stunners, some of them. Now, they've already been bar fined by their customer and come out of their bar. So in theory, they didn't have to go back to their bar. They were finished for the night. So Frozen has been saying to them, look, girls, you're already out your bar. Come here as freelancers in the bar and... Get, we'll get customers in, you've got the rooms, we'll do you a deal on lady drinks, we'll do you a deal on the room, you'll make money and you've got the customers, helps us with girls in the bar, makes us look busy and it will go from there. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Day two, five o'clock opening, within minutes there was girls coming with customers uh, from all over the place and then they started to stay. And it snowballed, just like this channel's going crazy. For the first, well, let's say 12 weeks, three months, we had loads of freelancer girls. We didn't have any girls on salary apart from two and Frozen. And the guys twigged and they just came. Plus we had the pool table, I had a pool league going. And it just went, it was magic. My first experience in a bar, 12 weeks, incredible. We were making money, and it's hard to make money as in a in a beer bar in Potato. It's very hard. This was a double-sized bar, so it had to make money. There were salaries and things. But we were clearing over 10,000 baht a day profit, which is huge. Honestly, that's a huge amount of money there. So that was two... Two, two, three hundred pound a night profit, incredible. I got a wage rise, so I was on twenty thousand baht a month, and I think I got up to about twenty two thousand. I had a tip jar on the uh, bar, people were throwing some money in, buying me drinks, so I was making a kickback off that. Frozen got her, got her a rise up to fourteen thousand baht, which was brilliant. She was happy, it was just wonderful for 12 weeks absolutely brilliant and then and then the battery ran out on the camera I don't know what happened then it just turned itself off 12 weeks then it just all collapsed and went absolutely crazy wrong everything went wrong So I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to stretch this. I have to do a, another video. So we're going to have to have three bar videos on this. Everything went wrong. Next video then. I get in a movie. I get a bottle over my head. We lose all the staff and customers. Everything goes pear shape. Next video. There you go. Bye for now. See you on the next one.